Hi, welcome back. This is the first of three lectures on how to optimize data transfer between host and device memories. In particular, we are going to look at how to allocate a new spin memory on CPU or host memory. In these lectures, I would like to emphasize four main points. First, the communication between the host and device are the slowest link of the data movement involved in GPU computing. So it's important we optimize transfer. Second, we can use spin host memory to avoid intermediate transfer. Third, to use spin host memory, we use CUDA host alloc instead of the usual malloc or new. Finally, one further optimization technique to optimize data transfer when using pin memory is that we can batch all the small transfer in one large data transfer. Modern computer systems use a specialized hardware mechanism called direct memory access, or DMA in short, to transfer data between an I.O. device and the system DRAM. When a program requests an I.O. operation, say reading from a, a disk drive, the OS makes an arrangement by setting a DMA operation, defined by the starting address of the data in the I.O. device buffer memory. The starting memory, the number of bytes to be copied, and the direction of the copy. Using a specialized hardware mechanism to copy data between I.O. device and system DRAM has two major advantages. First, the CPU is not burdened with the chore of copying data. So while the DMA hardware is copying data, the CPU can execute programs that do not depend on the I.O. data. The second advantage of using a specialized hardware mechanism to copy data is that the hardware is designed to perform copy. The hardware is very simple and efficient. There is no overhead of fetching and decoding instruction while performing the copy. As a result, the copy can be done at the highest speed the most processor can. As we will see in this lecture, DMA is used in data copy operation between a CPU and a GPU. It requires spin memory in DRAM and has a subtle implication on how applications should allocate memory. In order to understand the concepts of spin memory, I need to present a little bit more background on the memory management management in operating system. The OS manages virtual memory space for application. Each application has access to a large consecutive address space. In reality, the system has a limited amount of physical memory that needs to be shared among all the running applications. This sharing is performed by partitioning the virtual memory space into pages and mapping only the actually used pages into the physical memory. When there is much demand for memory, the OS needs to page out some of the page from the physical memory to the mass storage, such a disk. Therefore, an application might have its data page out any time during its execution. The implementation of CUDA memcopy uses the DMA device. When a CUDA memcopy function is called to copy between the host and device memory, its implementation using a DMA device to complete the task. On the host memory side, the DMA hardware operates on physical addresses. That is, the operating system needs to give a translated physical address to the DMA device. However, there is a chance that the data might be paged out before the DMA operation is complete. The physical memory location for the data may be reassigned to another virtual memory data. In this case, the DMA operation can be potentially corrupted since its data can be overwritten by the paging activity. Pin memory are virtual memory pages that are specially marked so they cannot be paged out. They are allocated by special system API function calls. The important point for us is that CPU memory that serves as the source of destination of a DMA transfer must be allocated as a pin memory. If as a source or a destination of a CUDA main copy in the host memory is not allocated in pin memory, it needs to be first copied to a pin memory, and this causes an extra override. When we allocate a new spin memory, we can avoid this extra step and extra overhead. Therefore, could a mem copy is faster if the host memory source or destination is allocated in pin memory, since no extra copy is needed. Pin memory is allocated with a special CUDA host alloc function. This function ensures that the allocated memory is pinned on a page or page lock from a paging activities. The CUDA host alloc function takes three parameters. The first two are the same as CUDA malloc. The third specifies some option for more advanced usage. For most basic use, use case, we can simply use the default value 
CUDA host alloc default. As usual, we also need to remember to free the pin memory. At the end of the our, our CUDA application, we CUDA free host function. This is an example of allocating three arrays on the host size with pin memory. We use the CUDA host alloc function instead of the usual malloc or new. The three array names have an H underscore instead of the usual D underscore because these arrays are allocated on the host memory. The host memory allocation is done with the CUDA host alloc function rather than the standard malloc function. The difference is that the CUDA host alloc function allocates a pin memory buffer, sometimes also referred to as page lock memory buffer. One important point is that host pin memory is a limited resource. resource. Therefore, a pin memory allocation might fail and we should always check for errors during the allocation of pin memory. So how much performance improvement can we get from host pin memory? The answer is that it depends on how much data we are moving. In fact, pin memory is much more expensive to allocate and deallocate, but it provides higher faster transfer throughput for large memory transfers. Batching many small transfer into one large transfer improve the performance of pin memory. Due to the overhead associated with each transfer and allocation of pin memory, it is preferable to batch many small transfers together into a single transfer. This is to do by using a temporary array and packing it with the data to be transferred. In the example on these slides, we can pack three arrays, A, B, and C, in one temporary array, pack A, B, C, and pin this memory with this temporary array using CUDA host alloc. So we reached the end of the first lecture on how to optimize host device data transfer. In this lecture, I have to stress four points. The first point is that it's important to, to optimize data transfer. Second, we can use a pin host memory to avoid intermediate step for using DMA. Third, we use CUDA host alloc instead of the usual malloc or new to pin host memory. Finally, one further optimization technique is that we can batch all the small transfer in one large data transfer. In the next lecture, we will focus on a second optimization technique to improve the performance of data transfer between host and device memory. We are done with this lecture and talk to you soon.